A crisis at the border. Thousands of illegal immigrants flooding into America. What's Gary Peters' position? Certainly, the enforcement uh, is very important. Immigration reform is not about more enforcement. Gary Peters plays both sides of the issue, putting Washington politics ahead of what's best for America and best for Michigan. Terry Lynn Land knows we need to secure the border and enforce our laws to protect our jobs and put Michigan first. I am Terry Lynn Land, and I approve this message. Every political stripe is seeking the advantage. As we plunge into those midterm election dates, every side, every politician knows they have to pick a winner, something that will light up not only their base, but that of people around their state and across the nation. And there is a thinking that the Republicans may have picked a winner in the border crisis. Maybe. Now let's get the reality. Welcome to Midpoint. The president of Citizens for Self-Governance, Mark Meckler, joins us. Mark, good to see you. Oh, thanks for having me. Mark, let's get right to that there. There are those who feel that the Republicans are making a great decision, that the border crisis is going to make it. Others will say, wait a minute, people care about jobs and economy, so they're making a huge mistake. Your side. Well, first of all, I think good policy makes good politics. I think J.C. Watts said that. And I think it is good policy to want to enforce the border. The vast majority of Americans want to see solid border enforcement. The vast majority of Americans are concerned about this crisis on our southern border. So I'm not so much into it as a political issue, as an electoral issue, but I think it is what Americans want to see, and that's what Republicans and, frankly, Democrats should be focused on. That's the point, though, then, with the people in, and I'll just pick out a couple of states here when we talk about the border crisis. Certainly we know that in Texas and California and Arizona, it's a big issue. When you talk about people in Massachusetts, Illinois, Washington State, when you're getting down to a presidential election, I think the biggest question here is, do they care and why should they care is what some people are asking. Well, I think that question involves a timeline. I mean, certainly they do care right now. Certainly it's going to be a factor in 2014. The question is, what happens between here and the presidential election in 2016? Is it really going to be an issue then? I think the border crisis is going to continue to play out over the long term. And frankly, with the Department of Justice or whoever else it is involved, Homeland Security, in shipping these immigrants all over the country, these illegal immigrants, I think it plays out in Massachusetts, Illinois. I think it plays out everywhere. Does it play out enough, though, for it to become something that people will pick an elected representative, a president on, if you will, this as a specific top dog issue? I certainly don't think it's the issue. I agree with you. I think the issue, the issue of our time is jobs and economic security more than border security. But I think it goes in the basket of issues. And right now, according to all polling, it's pushing its way up towards the top. What about Rick Perry here? Because certainly the governor of Texas has his own issues right now when it comes down to this uh, felony count, the indictment that has been returned against him now. He has to worry about that. Let's, let's look at that from both sides. First, from the side that says this is going to be a problem in his rehab. But i got to tell you, I've talked to some people who have already said, you know, this might not be a bad thing for Rick Perry. He beats this, and he once again comes out smelling pretty good. I mean, first of all, that felony indictment is a complete farce. It's the criminalization of the political process, and that's not a partisan issue. I mean, you've got people on the left like Think Progress, like David Axelrod, like Professor Alan Dershowitz, who have all come down and said this is smells bad. It's just the criminalization of the political process. I think that's something that people on the left are trying to do to the right all across this country. So with Perry coming out, guns blazing, fighting the thing, I think he comes out on top. I think he's going to be vindicated. I think the people who pursued this prosecution are going to come out looking really bad and maybe ending up with personal liability, as I think they should. Mark, why do Americans fall for this? Because when you say it doesn't pass the smell test, if you look at, out of every 10 articles right now today, nine of them say this doesn't pass the smell test, this absolutely is ludicrous, it's ridiculous. Yet you have people right now who are saying, wait a minute, I think they got him here. Why are the American people sometimes so gullible? Well, I don't think that most of them are. I think that's why. I mean, it's really unusual to see people on the left coming out and calling a prosecution against a Republican partisan, especially sort of against a firebrand Republican like Rick Perry. So I think they've gone way over the line. I don't think most Americans are going to buy it. I don't think they're gullible enough to buy this, and I think it's going to backfire. Let me talk one more thing about the, the border issue here, because this is where a lot of it comes down to the discussion here. There is a thinking process that many people will say, take them, turn them around, send them home right away. Then there were those who would say, wait a minute, this is America, this is a land of compassion, we need to be humanitarian. How does the right, how do Republicans stick with what seems to be their base that says send them home, yet at the same time still be humanitarian? 
I think, first of all, to remember, when you say stick with their base, the vast majority of Americans, last polling I, I saw said in excess of 60 percent, say the first thing to do is turn them around and send them home. So it's not the Republican base that wants to send them home. It's the vast majority of Americans. I'm hearing unions call for it. I'm hearing people on the left call for it. We are, first and foremost, a nation of laws. And if we don't enforce our laws, there's no room to be humanitarian. So I, I also hear people on the right, churches and others, calling out for providing humanitarian aid. We saw Glenn Beck uh, offer to go down to the border and provide humanitarian aid. A lot of churches are doing the same thing. Humanitarianism is not the job of government. And the government's job, first and foremost, is to secure the border. The citizens themselves are humanitarian. They'll continue to provide that humanitarian aid. But we must be a nation of laws and not men. I think it's certainly fair to say that the right has run on the fact that the current administration and administrations before it have not followed the rule of law, and that's really where we stand. So why then doesn't that get through? It would seem to be a pretty straightforward argument. It would seem to be one that you can back up very easily, yet it doesn't seem to, in some areas, gain a lot of traction. It always falls back on that humanitarian argument. Well, I think in this case it is getting through, and you know, every every crisis you, you've got the the pros and the cons of what happens and what people see out of that crisis. And I think the pro coming out of this crisis is the idea that the American public is seeing that this is indeed a lawless administration. That despite the fact that the law is clear and these people should be sent home, that this administration is not doing that. And more importantly, frankly, from a public perception point of view. The public at large wants these people sent home. The administration isn't doing it, and the public is angry about it. You know, I, we started things out here talking about what a winner might be for somebody, and we come down to the midterm elections here and the presidential elections in 2016. First, let's look at 2014 and the midterms. In your opinion, what then come up as the two or three winners right now? Let's first of all, let's take it from the Republican side. Let's push the border off to the side. But what is it that has to be sitting there that they need to pound on every single day in order to gain the victory? Well, I think number one has got to be jobs in the economy. W despite what the pundits say or despite what the White House says, when you travel the country as I do every day, what you see is people are hurting. The job market is still stagnant. Uh, housing market, while prices have gone up, people's wages are not going up, so people are suffering in the housing market. Uh, people are suffering to pay for basic necessities such as groceries and fuel. So that disconnect between Washington and D.C., Washington, D.C., and the rest of the country plays very strongly all across the country, regardless of what party you're talking about. And, and then I think the second thing is Obamacare. People are being punished by the implementation of Obamacare. Millions have lost their health insurance. Millions more are seeing their premiums rise. I think those are the two primary play issues for Republicans right D now. Does it catch you almost as if it's it's what you would expect because the media, certainly the news media specifically, the 24-7 cycle, whatever is hot at that moment and other things get buried right now. Obamacare has sort of taken a little bit of a back seat here in the last couple of weeks with so many other things, Ferguson, Missouri, Iraq, big name items that are going out there. Do you think that the American people are going to remember come the elections that this is something that they're going to say, wait a minute, you can't fool us, it's still here? Well, the American people will definitely remember because it's hitting them in their pocketbooks. And remember, if you're a family that's lost your health insurance because of Obamacare, you don't forget that. Not easily, frankly, not ever. If you're a family whose premiums have increased, as we've seen so many across the country, 10% to 75% all across the country, you're not going to forget that quickly. That hits you straight in the pocketbook. It's incredibly painful. And so the bottom line is, yeah, people are going to remember that, and they're going to be aided by literally millions upon millions of dollars in Republican advertising during the cycle. When we look at what's happening, and I mentioned Ferguson, Missouri here right now, that certainly has become a national issue, the rioting there several nights in a row. Is this something of an issue when we come to the discussion, the bringing people together, the idea that there is a large contingent of African Americans who are still very fearful on a daily basis of the police and authorities. Is this something that becomes a possible edge, a possible linchpin for people running for, for office? It could be. It depends on how they address it. Look, this president has utilized the race card over and over. I would argue that we are more divided on race than we were when he was first elected. An amazing situation after having the election of the first African-American president, but that's because of how he's played that race card. And instead of bringing people together, he's used race to divide us. I think people are sick and tired of that. I think the reality on the ground is different. And so I think people who use race as a way to bring us together to have reasonable discussions and fix our communities, that's where the value proposition is in, in the issue of race relations. About 30 seconds we have left. Would you say, in your opinion, that the Republicans, at least as we head towards the midterms, are getting it right, or do they still need to do a better job on that message? I think Republicans are generally headed in the right direction. What I always want to see from Republicans is more specifics, hammering home the message 
What would they do with the economy? What would they do to create jobs? What would they do in regard to health care? And, and my hope is on all those things they say, we're going to get the heavy hand of government off your back, and we're going to return the power to the people in the states. That's what will fix this country, and that should be the Republican brand. Careful, Mark. You just asked politicians to be specific. I, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody <laughs> here right now. Let's, let's be real careful where we go here. That could take years and cost thousands of lives. Careful. Mark, it's always a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you. Thank you so much for your comments. Thank you for having me. All right, here we go. It's all just about coming up for those midterm elections. Coming up in just a couple of moments, our daily check on what's happening in the stock market. The market master is here. And also there's discussion of a certain name that has Wall Street discussing what exactly they have in mind with a bit of a wager. The name is Soros. That and a whole lot more when we continue right here on Midpoint, where every day we question everything.